will meet two entrepreneurs and founders at Steelride in Stockholm, Sweden. They are building a new type of an electric scooter folded to perfection. The title of their presentation is Digital Value Chain for Industrial Origami. I give the stage to Jonas Lindberg Nyvang, CEO at Steelride, and Tue Beje, CTO at Steelride. Hi guys, uh, great to be here, honored to be part of this conference. Uh, my name is Jonas. Uh, we started Steel Ride as a research project uh, about two years ago, and uh, it's been developing into a brand, a product, and a technology platform. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, but uh, actually, my, my colleague here beside me, uh, Tuve Bayer, he started this project 22 years ago. <laughs> Hello there, uh, and welcome to our presentation. All right, uh, let's see now, we can start off. Are we on? Yeah. All right, so when you make a product, you actually take the raw material and uh, you refine it. Right, and um, so of course you can you can uh, you can create value through uh, with some extent through um, through uh, marketing, but the true gained value is actually through the level of refinement. And uh, I mean, usually you measure you gain value uh, with um, in money. Of course, we take this in consideration too. But uh, we're at Steel Ride, we also want to create a product in harmony with nature. We want to release the full potential of flat sheet material. So, yes, so there it is. Our product number one, which we call Steel Ride, and it's uh, created by folding metal where engineering and styling goes hand in hand. So over to you, Jonas. Yeah, in a nutshell, what this is about, uh, Steel Ride is a Swedish innovation with a sweet, strong sustainability focus uh, that uh, we're developing into a proprietary technology uh, with industrial potential. And it's all based on the unique design that the uh, tour created. And uh, we want to start with just showing a small clip uh, with a background around the product. The seed to the steel ride story, it was planted back in 1993 when I made the first electric scooter. This was actually the result of the love of old scooters. My name is Tuve Beyer, I'm an industrial designer and I'm the founder of Steelride. I've been in the vehicle design business for 20 years. I spent a long time developing a uh, sports car together with the legendary Giotto Bizzarini, who was the father of the 250 GTO and the Regini V12 engine. My name is Jonas Lindberg Nyvang, I'm the managing director and co-founder of Steelride. The mission with Steelride is to build the world's most attractive and sustainable electric scooter. Who is a shadowed friend of mine. When I saw the sketches, I, I found I gotta be part of this. Great, so, so the, what makes this product stand out and what makes it unique? Uh, there are four factors covered here and uh, we would uh, really emphasize the ride quality as uh, thanks to the light folded construction, but also the unique green design, uh, which actually has a unique form DNA uh, that's made out of the technique light folding that we're using. And that's gonna be a topic to cover in the next. She's all right. So here, this, is the chassis uh, of um, Steel Ride. The chassis is our uh, 
core and we want to start off making uh, a two with scooter but we're also planning in the future to to make an urban uh, urban logistics scooter so and that's done with the same chassis and it shows a bit of the ability of um, flexibility with the uh, with the chassis itself and uh, just to give you some short images from the studio this is the development that's been done um, during 2000, uh, 2020 and on the left you can see the first initial just uh, layouts and then with cardboard and and uh, laser cut cardboard and that was also uh, a very quick way to actually work forward and quick to uh, to actually get an understanding what we were doing so, and Steroid is not just the product platform, but uh, the ambition is to create a new digital value chain around flat sheet metal. And uh, working with metal workshops in actually constructing this. So why are, why are we using steel? We're going to cover that, this a little bit in a, in a small clip as well. The defining difference with today's steel ride is that we actually fold the steel from flat sheet material. And that's going to create a really, really defined design DNA. So a bit like dancing with the, with the sheet material. And that creates beautiful surface meetings between concave and convex surface. The downside of today's scooters is that they actually made around a tubular frame and then you put a plastic body on top of it. And that's always going to require uh, that you manufacture a lot of components to uh, give a return to investors. You, you start off with a, with a negative environmental footprint. One of the drawbacks with a, with a scooter is that you have small wheels and often the ride quality is suffering. What we're trying to create here is a really, really nice uh, ride quality with, with great suspensions in both front and back. When looking at the rear suspension, that is really down. I mean, that could be on a race bike. So, back again here. Um, so, uh, I mean, we were talking a bit in the film, you can heard about uh, uh, return of investments when making complex form in metal. So what we want to do is actually to to put a bracket around the money stack of money and Enable us to be more to break free from the traditional. I mean that you manufacture something out uh, or in a factory uh, We want to use the techniques um, that um, you can find in, in various in various metal workshops and re release the full potential with the with the, the tomorrow's uh, uh, robotic folding techniques. So, what is tomorrow's uh, folding techniques? There's actually nothing new about that. It's just it's here today, and it's been here for a long time. Origami, I mean, doesn't need to be presented very much. I mean, you have on the on the left, you can see straight folding. Um, a fold over a straight line so what we do to to go next step is folding over a curve and to do that you need to understand the the uh, mathematics and also the geometrical requirements that going to occur when you actually fold over a curve and as can be seen here on the right you have the curve on the flat medium and when the folding over the curve you will create a concave and a convex surface that will actually um, that will intersect in the curve folding line. And this shows, I mean, this is a very early, uh, this is a very early um, sketch here on the left. So you need to understand the layout and what happens when 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 surf, when you want to fold something with curves so you can't really there's a pattern you need to follow really you need to connect uh, a curve folded surface 
to another surface um, in order to, to actually fold it from a curve, uh, then you need to know exactly how that curve uh, is going to be developed. So in order to do this, we created an in-house software which can manage this and making us uh, making it possible to fold from a flat sheet. There will be a sketch later on showing a bit what we we what we um, what I'm what I'm describing here. And again, I mean, what's this important? So if we 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 need to be able to track what we're doing. So uh, this little image just shows the way how the design goes from a flat sheet into final product. So I mean, once you get to understanding how you want to have your design, you create your design in uh, together with the traditional uh, CAD uh, and using the add-on we created, and that's going to make sure that you can actually have uh, create something from from again from a flat sheet. And next step is taking the CAD data into CAM and fold it, and that will result in the final product shown here on the right. So the, the advantages that we see with this technology uh, is that we, we can reduce the number of components and, and uh, we've done our research on, the, on this specific product uh, and compared it to the industry leader NEO uh, with a tubular chassis frame and we've uh, uh, counted the parts and the components and uh, the NEO consists of about 80 to 100 parts while we reduced this to 15 to 20 parts in our chassis so it's a major major difference yeah so um this is as a pro uh, a product called or explorer it's a drill core analyzer made here in sweden and this was a design i did a couple of years ago and they were running into the same uh, problem this is uh, a two meter high and one by one meter in footprint and they were um they were required to do the make their design or the design didn't justify to be made in traditional stamping, you know, because it's not made in in a large number. So they they were uh, sent off to to mechanical workshop. But these uh, the 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 picture there on the on the left shows the cabinet, and the cabinet needed to be opened in order to actually make service on it. And uh, without without the folding technique, they they started off. Uh, with or sorry, uh, with a traditional folding technique and adding uh, adding uh, structural members to it, the doors became extensively heavy and was not able to be you know to you uh, be be usable. So that's why we created it in the. Uh, I started to create a more folding uh, uh, kind of uh, session with with metal in order to create something very strong but yet light. So uh, by doing this, we want to empower metal workshops to to uh, to produce advanced folded designs like steel ride. And um, and by doing this, we also want to enable local production of our product. And uh, this makes us more agile, and uh, we can do more customization locally uh, by working with metal workshops around the world. And uh, also, uh, we can create a more minimal, uh, uh, minimal environmental impact while producing locally. So, short uh, clip. The on interesting things when folding sheet metal is that you do something that the steel wants to do. You're not forcing the steel to do something it doesn't want. So a bit like dancing with a, with a sheet material. And that creates beautiful surface meetings between a concave and a convex surface. Um, so to, to sum it up here, this is uh, an image here on the left. Uh, actually showing what we are uh, visualizing what we want to do uh, you take uh, the flat sheet 
you do as many as the operation that would normally be done with stamping and welding we can we can now uh, to a great extent fold the full uh, body of the steel ride from one sheet material or from, from one flat surface and uh, again just a snapshot from from the from the software the plugin we use and we created and what we're now doing we're working together with the company Robotalen here in Sweden to to make this first uh, initial alpha test with with robotic arms uh, where we can fold this so it's a very interesting journey ahead but it's been uh, even so interesting uh, during the during the journey so far and uh, here you can see this is just a snapshot from from the studio the other day and you can see the uh, the visual uh, in, in industrial design or in design where we talk about uh, dna design dna and it's quite obvious that you create quite unique dna with folding and uh, and that's what it shows there and <clears throat> by the end of the year we will reach uh, to the full, uh, to, to uh, two fully functional uh, scooters, so it's really interesting to see them uh, to 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 develop here in this in our studio. So by that, I would like to hand over to Jonas and say thank you for me. So the last two weeks, uh, press and opinion leaders have uh, discovered uh, steel ride around the world, uh, which is super fun for us. It all happened organically, uh, which shows that there is an appetite for the product and that the design is not culturally specific, but uh, universal. And we had about 50 articles so far uh, from India, Vietnam, China, France, Spain, Italy, and the UK. And uh, they, most of them love the design, which we are happy about. And, and uh, also the technology behind it they feed each other and uh, we would not have realized this uh, and become uh, reached this far without our partners in this project uh, Brantem, Rice, Autocompo, Semcon and Robotalan uh, so big thank you to you guys and uh, ending this uh, we, we want to hope that you let us know if you have questions thoughts or if you're interested in a test drive, uh, you can just uh, go to our site and sign up. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to the Q&A session this afternoon. So thank you very much to and Jonas. And uh, I'm also looking forward to that very much. And we also got comments from the audience that they are thrilled about talking to you more in the Q&A session. Fun. Uh, but of course, I think that you should uh, make uh, uh, Olof Ström, uh, the stamping center, one of the first users of this, because I'm so thrilled to see our colleagues going from uh, 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 Rise to Volvo on uh, Steel Ride. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Any day. Thank you. And. Uh, so, so see you back in the Q&A session, and thank you again very much. And uh, now I hand over to Ingela.